Hi everyone, it's KJ here, and it seems like now more than ever, the appeal to get an iPad as a student continues to grow. Especially because with all of these online assignments, being able to download, complete, and upload everything from one device is just so much more convenient than having to download it, print it, complete the assignment, scan it, then later upload it. So in this video, I really tried to find my top 12 tips and tricks for using an iPad as a student. Hopefully these help you out when trying to use your iPad for school. For reference, my iPad is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro 2018 model, but most of these should apply to all of them that are Apple Pencil compatible at least. Also, my note taking app of choice has been Notability, so some of my tips are Notability specific. Huge shout out to Paperlike for sponsoring this video, and let's get right into it. My first tip is to export files to PDF. Whenever you first open up a document or PDF, most likely it's going to open up in Safari and that web-based viewer is okay if you're just trying to reference the document. But if you actually want to do any more permanent annotations on it, I recommend that you export it as a PDF directly to your app of choice. In my case, I always send them directly to Notability, and you do this by simply clicking the share icon and clicking Notability. If it isn't showing initially, you just have to click more, and the other apps that you can send it to will appear. Then now your document will appear in Notability and you'll be able to directly alter it right away. This is what I do every single time I have a written assignment and it's helped a ton. My second tip is to name your individual notes within Notability with the course names. What I mean by this is if you have a class where you have a problem assignment, don't just name it PSET1 or PSET2, name it the class name PSET1, so like 7013 PSET1, Bio PSET1, so that later on when you search for things, it'll be much easier. If you didn't include the course name, you would have to individually open various notes to figure out which PSET1 you're looking for. This is just generally good practice and will help you save time later on when you're trying to reference these documents or assignments. The more you use your iPad for school, the more classes you will inevitably use it for, so any way you can improve your organization will help a lot. My third tip is to copy parts of the document within Notability. I like to include the problem statement before my problems when I'm writing my assignments. This is easy if the questions are already pre-spaced, but otherwise this could get pretty tricky. A feature that I learned on Notability is that you can copy a certain selection, and if you click paste image instead of just paste, Notability will paste as an image whatever was in the selection rectangle. This way I'm able to put problem statements in place and I can write directly underneath it. This has allowed me to organize my problem sets just overall and also has allowed me to not have to scroll up to reference a problem while I'm doing it. My fourth tip is to sync with iCloud if you have other Apple devices. This is something that I wish I had done earlier because it has helped so much when having to reference different documents from my different devices. Within apps like Notability, you'll be able to enable iCloud syncing, which allows you to pull up your individual notes from your phone, laptop, or any other Apple devices. Outside of Notability, iCloud helps you save all of your documents and PDFs and nice places that you can go back and later reference. I personally have my documents and desktop folders automatically synced through iCloud, so whenever I save anything to these folders, I'm able to access those files from my other devices almost instantly. A big reason why people purchase iPads to begin with is because of that Apple ecosystem, and utilizing iCloud will actually enable you to take good use of that. iCloud has made it easy for me to reference files that I hadn't touched in years, and they're just always available. My next tip is a neat feature that's within Notability, and it's automatic shape creation. A big reason why notes just seem to look a lot better written from an iPad are features like this one. With automatic shape creation, you're able to draw various shapes just by making your best attempt at it, then holding the pencil down for an extra two seconds. This feature works with creating lines, rectangles, circles, ellipses, and even other random polygons. I just think this is a cool feature to keep in mind when writing notes or completing assignments because it just makes everything look that much cleaner. My sixth tip is that you can mirror your iPad screen into Zoom calls. Just about every college or university is using Zoom right now for their lectures, and this was a cool feature that I realized a couple weeks ago. This is a feature you can use when collaborating with friends on a problem set. Zoom allows you to either plug in your iPad to mirror it into the call or AirPlay in, which I think is cooler and more convenient. To do so, you just have to click share screen, then choose the AirPlay iPad or iPhone button. 
and as long as both of your computer and iPad are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you'll be able to airplay your iPad in order to instantly mirror anything you're doing on the iPad to the other people on the call. If you've noticed throughout the video, there's been a certain screen protector on my iPad, and that screen protector is my favorite by far right now, and it's made by the sponsor of today's video, Paperlike. I've had a Paperlike screen protector on my iPad for the last two months, and honestly, I couldn't go back to just riding on the bare glass anymore. The screen protector does exactly what its name suggests, and just makes riding on the iPad feel a lot more paper-like. And it does a weirdly great job at it. It provides just enough friction and physical feedback now where it makes riding on the iPad so much more pleasant. It's something that I didn't know I would love so much until actually using it. Since these paper-like screen protectors are also do a good job of maintaining the clarity of the screen, I really can't envision myself using an iPad without a paper-like screen protector in the future. Make sure to go down in the description below to check them out you really won't regret it. My seventh tip is to open multiple windows at the same time. With the new iPadOS update, you can even open multiple instances of the same app at the same time. So a lot of times I use Notability with multiple instances of it open. This allows me to reference my lecture notes while also completing my assignment. Just a side note, this is a big reason why I like using my 12.9 inch iPad Pro more than a smaller one because I'm able to split the screen and still have plenty of space to write my assignments on a reasonably sized portion of the screen. In general, try to make as much use of the iPad's multitasking features as you can, because it'll help you finish your assignments more efficiently. My eighth tip is to style your writing after the fact. Notability's selection tool is powerful. We previously saw that it allows you to copy and paste pieces of the PDF, but something that has proved to be very useful is the ability to be able to style your text after the fact. This means that on top of being able to select writing, move it around, and resize it, you'll be able to select that writing to do things like change the pen weight and the color. This has saved me a lot of time in the past because it has allowed me to just continue writing and not have to redo certain sections because I didn't like the way they looked. Just knowing that you can style your text after the fact will allow you to really just focus on the content and material and worry about the organization and aesthetics after, which will just help with your overall workflow. You can even change the selection tool from a rectangle to freeform, so you can just change the text that you want to. My ninth tip is that when you're airplaying and writing notes in Notability, you can go into presentation mode. In this mode, notifications won't come onto the screen. This will help whenever your iPad screen is being mirrored, so presentation mode will definitely also work within Zoom. This puts your iPad in a more monitor and TV-friendly 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and also allows you to do things like point out certain areas on your iPad screen without actually having to write on the screen. I think this is just a really cool feature to keep in mind, and especially during these self-isolation periods, this will help a lot with collaboration. My tenth tip is to utilize the pop-up panel in iPadOS. Even with how big the iPad is, I like using apps in full screen to just take advantage of that whole screen. So I like having features like the side panel to just quickly reference things and go back to what I was doing. With the floating panel functions, you can quickly look at an article that is helping you for your assignment, or you can quickly check a notification without having to completely change apps. This panel basically functions like an iPhone where you can quickly switch between apps within the panel using the same gestures that are on your phone. And if you ever wanted to transition that page into a half or full screen, you can do that too. My 11th tip is to zoom into lecture notes when you're writing notes. This may seem like a trivial tip, but it's something that I really started using this past semester. A lot of lecture notes will probably be in PowerPoint format, so writing notes in the relevant areas gets kind of difficult when there isn't too much available white space. You can work around this by choosing the thinnest pen weight and then zoom into a section of that white space to write what you wanted to write. It will be very small, but when you're referencing the notes later, you will always be able to zoom in to see what it says. My 12th and final tip also involves zooming in, but this time for reference sheets. A lot of the classes that I've taken at MIT have allowed for double-sided written reference sheets for exams. Previously, to fill in note sheets, you had to be very careful to write only what's needed. But with an iPad, you'll be able to zoom into various sections, write smaller, move things around, and style things in a way that will be more legible when you're referencing things later. Of course, you have to be cognizant of the fact that you'll have to be able to read what you write later, but just being able to zoom into various areas and make sure your writing is legible for these reference sheets is a huge plus. You'll also be able to use my other tips like copying and pasting certain pieces of lecture notes into different places within the reference sheet. So that's all I had to talk about today. Let me know in the comment section if there are any tips that you have for using the iPad as a student. 
As for this channel, make sure to subscribe and have the notification bell clicked to stay up to date with the videos that I'm posting. And make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up to date with what I'm doing. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.